Anyone that knows me personally can attest to the fact that if you give me a subject or even a word, I can probably yap about that subject for 30, 40 minutes, no problem. Words spew out of my face faster than Jeff Daniels' ass in Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> but I kid you not, I have been sitting here in this chair for over an hour and a half thinking about how to introduce this video because I am so stunned and baffled at the poor decision making that Watchtower made in a recent announcement and I just can't get my head around why they're doing it. So let's talk about it. Hello and welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we are talking about an announcement that Watchtower is going to make that is one of the biggest head scratchers I have seen from them in a very long time and we'll get into it. But quickly before we do, don't forget to drop a like on the video. It helps to get out to more people on YouTube and is very much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying this content and would like to see more of it. With all of that being said, I want to take a step back before we get into the announcement and talk about the history of Watchtower and their relationship to being Bible students. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, there was a expression that was almost common vernacular amongst most of the people that I knew, and that was our children have a better understanding of the Bible than most pastors, preachers, and priests. Now, this hubris that they have wasn't with completely without warrant because the Jehovah's Witnesses have a long history of considering themselves to be students of the Bible. They used to call themselves Bible students before they were known as Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is really born from a constant commitment to furthering their biblical education, or at least their Jehovah's Witness education, and continuing to learn and study some of the more complicated Jehovah's Witness theology throughout the years. Just to add a little bit of historicity to what I'm saying, let's look at a watchtower from the 80s that really highlights exactly how serious they were with their Bible study. True Christians are happy indeed to have found wisdom. That means the ability to use their knowledge of God's word in their act of worship, in solving their day-to-day -day problems, and in making decisions concerning their goals in life. Before being accepted for baptism by Jehovah's Witnesses, each candidate's basic Bible knowledge is tested by a comprehensive series of pointed questions. One of the concluding questions asks, Following your baptism in water, why will it be vital for you to maintain a good schedule for personal study and to share regularly in the ministry? This impresses on the mind of the baptismal candidate the need to continue to study beyond the elementary things and press on to maturity. Today, likewise, it would appear that some, when once they have acquired sufficient knowledge to dedicate themselves to Jehovah with the hope of living forever in paradise on earth, do not develop serious long-term study habits. They may feel that they know enough to get along, spiritually speaking. They do not go beyond the milk stage. Paul states frankly that such ones remain unacquainted with the word of righteousness. That is, they are unaccustomed to using the word of righteousness to test things out. How many years have you been a dedicated servant of Jehovah? Reflect on your spiritual growth over those years. Are you able to explain from the Bible only the basic truths, the elementary things of the sacred pronouncements of God? A few who have been in the Christian way for 10 or 20 years are still at the milk stage. What would people think of a child 10 years old or of a young man or woman age 20 who is still being bottle fed on milk? Would this not be an anomaly? Would not such a milk diet stunt the person's growth? The individual might survive, but he or she would not grow into a strong, healthy adult. The same is true spiritually. Why are some who have been Christians for years not spiritually strong enough to take an active part in helping the normal babes, those who have just taken their stand for Jehovah? These who have not advanced have for years received of the time and attention of Christian elders and other mature ones. Still, as Paul says, they themselves ought to be teachers in view of the time. To become teachers, they must progress beyond the milk diet and get used to eating solid food. How can they do this? Paul says that solid food belongs to mature people, and he defines such as those who through use have their perceptive powers trained to distinguish both right and wrong. 
In other words, those who make a habit of using whatever knowledge of God's word they have to distinguish both right and wrong will gradually train their perceptive powers and will attain Christian maturity. They will become accustomed to using the word of righteousness to test things out and thus to distinguish between what is wholesome and what is hurtful morally, spiritually, and even physically. Yes, they made comparisons to people that ate good, regular, solid food to a bunch of milk-drinking babies. Now, this was a comparison not just about people outside of the congregation, but they were talking about inside the congregation. And, and like I said before, they viewed their children as having more understanding of the Bible than most people that were, have been Christians their entire lives on the outside. So when they say this person is a, a, a babe spiritually, they are still talking about someone that maybe is a teenager or newly baptized. There was a culture amongst Jehovah's Witnesses that the older you were, the wiser in the scriptures you were. The more you knew the Bible, the more scriptures you had memorized, the more prophecies that Jehovah's Witnesses claim to have happened or their intricate numerology that they use, you had that in your mind at all times and could present those arguments if, whenever given the opportunity. And that was just a hallmark of being a Jehovah's Witness, was continuing to advance and grow in your understanding of the Bible. And this culture of studiousness wasn't something that just died out overnight. In fact, I think for a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, they still identify with that. If someone is my age or older, they're probably in that same exact mindset. And to a certain extent, what we've gotten from the organization, from the leadership, from the governing body, even in recent years, as they've made more of a shift to these video productions, they have still maintained their identity of being very studious Bible readers. Listen to what Stephen Lett had to say about being childlike but not childish. The theme for this program is be childlike but not childish. So the negative trait that children have is immature feeding habits. Think about it. Young children have a tendency to eat what they like regardless of its nutritional value. Most young ones would be perfectly happy eating ice cream, candy, cookies, and other sweets for all of their meals. But now we ask, what do our spiritual appetites and feeding habits reveal about us? To illustrate, simply reading through the Bible could be likened to walking quickly through the world's greatest museum and periodically glancing at the various displays. You'll learn something. But meditatively peering into God's Word can be likened to stopping all along the museum route and even stooping down and closely examining from different angles the artifacts, exhibitions, and displays. Now, our knowledge and appreciation are going to be enhanced much more. Yes, our spiritual appetite and feeding habits reveal much about whether we have done away with the trait of a young child, namely, immature feeding habits. Clearly, this is a callback to a watchtower that this man grew up in. He equates it, like they did back in the 80s, with these immature feeding habits. That being, oh, you only want the candy and the cookies. You don't want the substance, the real stuff. You don't want to do that hardy study where you're diving into prophecies and cross-referencing things. It was, it was, and to a certain extent is, a mark of Christian maturity. Something that, to many people, their very lives depend on that. Even if you are a baptized Jehovah's Witness, you will be scared that you're not a good enough Jehovah's Witness. Again, listen to Stephen Lett sort of explain how there are layers to spiritual truths. Well, how do we feed the good army? Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man must live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from Jehovah's mouth. 1 Peter 2, 2 talks about the milk of the word. 
Hebrews 5.14 talks about the solid food, deeper truths of God's Word. Uh, Matthew 24.45, Jesus talks about feeding his disciples through the faithful slave. So how do we feed the good army? Well, we consistently, diligently consume this spiritual food and thereby keep the law of God in our mind well-nourished, strong, and healthy. So sticking with the theme here, you have solid food that belongs to mature Christians. These are the deeper truths. There are layers. It's like an excavation project. You, you keep digging down and you keep unearthing new truths, new facts, new understanding that will help you to be a better Christian. And Jehovah's Witnesses want to start people off very young. They don't want you to wait until you're in your 40s or 50s before you become a diligent student of God's Word. They want you to start when you are extremely young, maybe even in school. Uh, listen to this example that they gave. Good morning, class. As we delve deeper into chapter 4, we're going to see why we know that evolution is a fact. I feel so confused. I know some things they teach at school don't agree with the Bible, but sometimes they just seem to make sense. I finally told mom some of the challenges I was having. She really listened and admitted struggling with some of the same issues when she was younger. Then she shared Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is unacquainted with the word of righteousness, for he is a young child. But solid food belongs to mature people, to those who through use have their powers of discernment, trained to distinguish both right and wrong. She said when her personal study went beyond the surface on questions and issues that bothered her, she began to discover truly meaningful answers that built up her faith and helped her make good decisions. It helped her to go from just feeling it was the truth to knowing it. Now, this is in reference to a subject that would be difficult for a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses to talk about, and that's evolution. But they want children to start young and learning what their biblical stance is. Before they're just going to go and throw themselves before the wolves, they need to have an understanding of the science, anti-science, I suppose, of what their position is, and that requires personal study, not just like memorizing stuff, but you actually have to really know it because you might end up in a debate situation, and if you're in a debate situation, you, whatever you have memorized will quickly be exposed as the only thing you know about the subject, and then you will just look like a fool. Now, all of this was fueled by the leadership of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The leadership were giving material to Jehovah's Witnesses that was dif more difficult to understand, that required more than just a surface-level glance to really grasp what they were on about, stuff that would dive deep into the prophecies of Revelation and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel, and really getting into, well, why was the cup in this prophecy gold and not silver? And how why did this dragon have seven horns and one horn was bigger than the other? All of these different correlations about how this bear was actually Persia and how this lion was actually Babylon. There were so many intricate details that people could sink their teeth into that it really uh, fueled this culture amongst Jehovah's Witnesses. And one of the best uh, tools that Watchtower had was the Congregation Bible Study. Now, the Congregation Bible Study was a meeting that Jehovah's Witnesses had in outside of the Kingdom Hall, for the most part, and in individual homes. And they would be made up of groups of around, I would say, 20 to 30 uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and they would study one of these deep books of the Bible with a companion book from Watchtower about Isaiah or Daniel or Revelation. And it was a more intimate setting uh, because if you're in a congregation of 200 people, and you have a conductor and he's asking questions, there might be an opportunity to comment or, you know, take part in the discussion two, th maybe three times uh, over the course of an hour, an hour and a half program. 
Whereas when you're at this congregation Bible study and there's only 15 people in the room, there's going to be a lot more interaction. So instead of commenting two or three times, you might be commenting like 10 to 20 times. So it, it felt more like a group discussion. And that was the place where they would talk about a lot of these deeper truths. And it's my opinion that the congregation Bible study was when Jehovah's Witnesses really fed into that ideal uh, Christian mature witness of this well-studied, well-versed person that understood the Bible uh, in, in a more than a surface level. They couldn't just paint John 13, 35 on their face, but they could tell you something about Habakkuk or Hosea. Uh, they, they were real nerds for the Bible. And then Watchtower got rid of that. They, they said, no more, we're not go going to have the congregation Bible study in individual homes, but you're going to do it as a group uh, at, the, at the Kingdom Hall. So they made that switch. I can't remember. I was still a witness at the time. I think it was like 2008 or 9, I want to say, somewhere around there, when that happened. But they still considered some of these uh, books that were meatier. We'll use their expression. They weren't milk. They were the steak and potatoes of the meal. So... This is all to build up to what announcement they just made. Well, let's look at this elders letter that was recently sent out at the beginning of the month, and let's see what sort of meat they're going to be consuming at their next congregation Bible study. In their August announcements, we see number four says this. Lessons you can learn from the Bible. Beginning the week of July 14th, 2025, the book of lessons you can learn from the Bible will be considered at the Congregation Bible Study. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't even know what this book was. I, I don't remember even knowing that it existed because back in my time, this was called the My Book of Bible Stories. And it's just a rebranding of that. It's the exact same thing. And that is a book designed for children. Yes, grown adults are now going to be sitting at their congregation meeting looking to get these spiritual truths and the vessel in which they are going to participate in that activity is going to be a children's book. Uh, imagine, like actually imagine being a Jehovah's Witness when you hear this announcement. Hey guys, I know we have this book club that all of us enjoy and we get to discuss things and man, it's one of the bright points of our lives is going to this book club. You know what I think the next book should be? Curious George or Bernstein Bears. Imagine going to your book club and saying, hey, guys, can we read Bernstein Bears next and talk about it over the course of the next year or two? You would be laughed at immediately. And I cannot imagine a scenario where a hardcore believing Jehovah's Witness sees this and thinks, oh man, I'm just so excited. Yeah, make me dance in my chair and wiggle my finger. I can't believe we get to study a children's book. Now, I went back and looked to see if maybe I was completely bricked in the head and maybe this is something that they have done before. I couldn't find it. If they have studied a children's book and gone over that, like the My Book of Bible Stories, I couldn't find it, but maybe I'm wrong. So I could have this wrong, so don't take this as law, but I, I don't think that in the past they've ever studied a children's book in this capacity, like in the congregation Bible study way. Maybe a brochure or something that was short, but they study these books for like a year and a half, two and a half years or so. So they're going to be grinding through this whole thing for weeks and weeks and weeks. But just so you get like a real idea of when they originally produced this book, uh, this is how they talked about it. So this was actually originally made in 1978. And here is a, a meeting that they had in 1979 talking about like the usage of this Bible story book. On June 3rd, 1979, they wanted to have children bring their copies of the My Book of Bible Stories to the next meeting because they had a special uh, part designed for them. Now advance forward one week and you have this part. How many children have a personal copy of this book, My Book of Bible Stories? Have them raise their hands and show the book if they remember to bring it. It is a wonderful provision to help young ones learn about Jehovah and his word. So a guy gets up and 
raises his little yellow my book of Bible stories and says, Hey kids, did you remember your Bible, your my book of Bible stories? And all the little kids sit there like, I got my copy, yippee! And then later on, the instructions for the part continue. Invite a couple to the platform who regularly study this publication with their children. Have the couple demonstrate studying with their children. Have them comment about benefits of studying this publication with their children. And sometimes they would even have preaching campaigns to offer this in their door-to-door -door ministry. And look at the demographic that they were looking for. My book of Bible stories has filled a need. Parents interested in teaching their children needed a book designed for that purpose. The society saw that need and filled it. The book is simple but not childish. Its large print is appreciated by both young and old. Its many pictures are appealing to young minds. The short stories, related in a colorful manner, hold the attention of youngsters. Children need something that extracts the lessons and principles from a Bible story and explains them in a way that young minds can grasp. The entire point of this book was to appeal to children. This is Nick Jr. This is Blue's Clues. This is Bob the Builder. And now they want grown adults who have been Jehovah's Witnesses for decades, have been reading the Bible, constantly being shoved this, this image of what a good Jehovah's Witnesses, Witness is, of this almost scholarly, wise old Gandalf figure. And now they're going to be sitting there and watching Bob the Builder together. For a long time now, I have talked about how Watchtower's dumbing down of their theology is ultimately going to backfire on them. And I was completely flabbergasted that they would double down in this egregious way. This is insulting to any Jehovah's Witness that has been do putting in the hard work and studying for years and years and years. You're essentially saying all of that time that you put into understanding these deep Bible truths, it was for nothing. You can actually get by with just knowing Adam and Eve ate an apple, Jesus died for our sins, there was a dusty man named Moses that freed the slaves from Egypt, and the apostles walked around with fireballs on top of their head and spoke in tongues. Bada bing, bada boom, paradise for you. That is such an insult to the people that have spent years of their life trying to understand this complicated Jehovah's Witness theology. And I truly believe that this is going to backfire on them. I think that Jehovah's Witnesses that are still remaining members of their congregations, that are still actively participating in it, are the most hardcore witnesses. And I think you want to appeal to the most hardcore and loyal Jehovah's Witnesses out there. If you see people leaving, they might be the people that only consume this surf surface level stuff. So why are you appealing to them? They're, they're going to leave anyway. Someone that needs to study this my book of Bible stories or whatever they call it now, anyone that is going to benefit from that as an adult probably is not going to be a Jehovah's Witness anyway. Give them something deeper. Give them something more. So I could not figure out for the life of me why they went and did this until I started researching for this video. Now, you might have thought I was just teasing you along for and waiting till the end so you'd watch the video longer, but maybe a few of you caught on to what was being said in those old watchtowers because it actually gave a hint. So we already looked at one example from the 80s and this is even farther back in a 1963 watchtower. There was a series of articles that was talking about maturity, a Christian requirement. And in those articles, there was this paragraph that really highlights exactly what I'm on about. Another way in which we can prove to ourselves whether we are augmenting our maturity is if we can find and work out answers to problems. Can we reason on principles and arrive at right conclusions? When asked questions, can we give scriptural answers to them? 
can we and do we work out problems of our own and those in connection with our ministerial duties? If so, we come within the proper understanding of 1 Corinthians 14. Do not become young children in powers of understanding, but be babes as to badness, yet become full-grown in powers of understanding. Jehovah's Witnesses, back in the day, if you will, were being trained and taught and told that they should be able to think for themselves. That was part of being a mature Christian. It was ingrained into their identity, being able to work out for yourself what is wholesome, what is hurtful morally, spiritually, and even physically. Having those perceptive powers trained. Earlier in that article, it says they can't just be uh, consumers, but they should reach the level where they themselves can be teachers. They can help the spiritually weak people. Now, I think what current Watchtower leadership is thinking is that if people are able to have the tools to think for themselves or if they're being told that they should reach a level where they can read the Bible and be able to distinguish you know, right from wrong, spiritually or otherwise, that endangers the power that the governing body have consumed. They've gone into this way of presenting information. Look back at what they said when they made the beard announcement. The governing body has concluded that there is a need to clarify this matter. Everything nowadays is the governing body has decided. They don't want people thinking anymore. They don't want them to be able to reason things out. Why? Because if you can think and you can reason on your own without the help of Daddy Watchtower, you might just realize that they're full of a bunch of nonsense and leave. So they back themselves into this fascinating corner where if you continue with this deep things of God and really getting into the Bible, you need to give people something. And that might involve making predictions or trying to do these deeper understandings or correlating world events with Bible prophecy, which is something that they used to do a lot more of. But if they're trying to shy away from that, uh, being an identifying mark of Jehovah's Witnesses and be more mainstream, they have to have this dumbing down process. But my Lord, did they pick the stupidest way to do that by having adults sit around and discuss episodes of Bob the Builder. There is a hundred different ways I could come up with off of the top of my head that would have been a more effective marketing strategy for the new brand of Watchtower. But I truly believe that this will have an impact on Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't know how any self-respecting person could sit there and think, oh yeah, I'm just going to be so excited to look over this Bible story book. It would be such an insult uh, at least in my opinion. But hey, comment down below. Let me know what you think of all of this. I find it really interesting and really fascinating. I think it's all in those micro details that we can sort of navigate where Watchtower might be going in the future. And as you know, it's a lot of fun to speculate what they might be up to next. Those little goofballs never cease to entertain us. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I got nothing else to say, so stay safe, be kind, and show yourself the same kindness that you show to others. And I hope you have a good-ass day. Now, as my recording was downloading onto my computer so I can edit it, I took a shower. I'm actually allergic to cats and dogs, so I have to shower if they, allergies get really bad. But anyway, this is neither here nor there. And uh, I just don't think I quite drove home the point of the absurdity of this decision that they're making. I, I really don't think I did it justice because it is absolutely outrageous. So grown adults are going to be going to a Jehovah's Witness meeting, and they are quite literally going to be hearing this. Jehovah planted a garden in a place called Eden. The garden was full of flowers, trees, and animals. Then God made the first man, Adam, out of dust and blew into his nostrils. Do you know what happened? The man became a living person. Jehovah put Adam in charge of the garden, and God told him to give names to all the animals. So there is someone that's going to get up on stage in this room full of adults 
and read this paragraph and then ask the question, what work did Jehovah give to Adam? And a grown adult will have to raise his hand and be like, uh, to name the animals. And then another grown adult is going to look at him and say, good answer. Anyone else have comments on this? It is baffling. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, maybe they're trying to attract children. Maybe they're trying to get them more involved in meetings. Absolutely, you are wrong. Children have no idea what's going on at a Jehovah's Witness meeting. They are lost. By the time you are cognizant of what's going on, really, at a meeting, you probably outgrew this book, essentially. If a five- or six-year-old or seven-year-old is there, they are licking the armrest. They are wanting to get up and go to the bathroom. They want to go see their friends and run around and play. By the time you're 12, you're probably already at a level where you're above learning that God put Adam and Eve in the garden and named the animals. You probably need a little bit more substance in your life at that point. So if this is to appeal to children, the demographic is between like 7 and 12. And and that would be about it. And that would be a ridiculously stupid uh, decision to make. But can you imagine week by week by week going there as a believing Jehovah's Witness, having studied the Bible for decades? It's been your entire life. And now your entire religion has been watered down to the point where you have to raise your hand like a like like you're a little child and say, "Well, Jehovah told Adam that he could name the animals." He, then he gave him a wife and called him Eve. Then there was a snake. That is what your religion has become. Now, I think another fallout from that is why are people going to go to a meeting? If this is the type of information that they are getting from meetings, their time would be better spent doing their own personal Bible study. It is quite literally a waste of time to go to a meeting. So if you have a problem, if your watchtower and the problem is no one is showing up for our in-person meetings, what should we do? Don't say, hey, let's pretend that we can really learn something from this children's book. If my microphone has not been on... Oh, no, it is on. Anyway, I just really wanted to drive home just how absurd this is. Now that I did that, uh, run the intro. Not the intro, the outro. I'm tired. I'm going to edit this thing and hopefully get it out tonight. I'll see you guys later. I have should have another video coming out tomorrow or the day next because a uh, little known fact, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, secretly started tithing, uh, which is something that is brand new. So yeah, that'll be coming out uh, either tomorrow or the day next. Anyway, see you.